you know, when I refer someone, I always give them the best suggestion I have. So, here I am. I am about to share the biggest resource pack that no one else has ever shared you before. So, these resource pack will genuinely help you land a job at big tech companies. The purchasable resources are available through affiliate links that help to support this channel. Regardless, these are the resources I have used both purchased and free. And if you like to see more condensed version of this list, check out the blog. Starting off, we'll begin with the coding resources. Cracking the coding interview is a perfect book to kick off your journey into coding interviews. If you are just starting out, I highly suggest you giving it a go. The explanation for the questions are super clear, especially if you got a basic handle on algorithms and data structures. Next up is elements of programming interviews for Python, Java and C++. If you got some experience under your belt, the question in this book matches what you'll face in the interviews at big tech companies. Once you nail these questions, you'll be thoroughly prepared for your average tech interviews. It might not be beginner friendly as CTCI, but it lays out a study plan tailored to your preparation needs. Then we have Neatcode.io. Neatcode offers an amazing list of coding interview questions that are covered in depth. It has been gold standard for anyone beginning their data structures and algorithms theory. Finally, we have CSES problem set task. These problems pose a significant challenge, particularly for those unfamiliar with algorithm practice. This resource isn't geared towards beginners. Mastering the sorting and searching section will prepare you thoroughly for coding interviews, surpassing the skills of the average lead code user and the most other interview candidates. If you find lead code's medium questions easy and CTCI too simplistic, this resource offers a level of difficulty you seek for any coding interview. Now, let's talk about learning algorithms. This is a part where most developers struggle to find the right resources, so I'll share you the right resources. First up is Introduction to Algorithms, 4th edition. This textbook is widely regarded as the best resources for learning algorithms. It was also personally used by my university to teach the core and essential algorithms for most coding problems. The 4th edition was recently released and is still relevant to MIT students. If you need structure and a traditional classroom setting to study, follow MIT's algorithm course. Next up is William Fisett's Data Structure and Algorithms. William does an amazing job explaining complex data structures and algorithms at a fundamental level. This is different from studying just for coding interviews because you'll gain an in-depth understanding of underlying data structures and algorithms through his videos. Next is CSES.FI Handbook. This handbook is tailored for individuals who are highly proficient with most lead code algorithms. It serves as valuable complementary resources to CSES.EFI curriculum and is available for free. Lastly, we have Competitive Programming 4th Edition. For seasoned algorithm enthusiasts, this book dives into every niche data structure and algorithms that could potentially be asked in any coding interviews. While such extensive preparation may not be typically be required for FANG type companies, it can be relevant for rules in hedge fund type companies. Next, let's move to system designs. My first recommendation is system design interview, uh, which is online course plus community. In my view, you'll be fully prepared for any system design interviews with these resources. The diagrams are easy to understand and the explanations in the course are straightforward, aiding in the quick comprehensive of system design concepts. This subscription is worthwhile because of the Discord community, which includes mock interview partners, salary discussions, and comprehensive overviews of system design topic for collaborative studies with fellow users. Next up is System Design Primer. This is the best resource I have found on system design, which dives deeper into the Git repository and you'll learn everything you need to know about system design. Then we have Crocking the System Design Interview. If you need something more in-depth, you can check out this resource, which gives clear industry standard system design explanation for the world's largest products. A complete read-through of this and the system design interview should be enough to pass any system design interview. Finally, there's Design Data Intensive Applications. If you're further along in your software engineering career, this book is a must read. It will guide you on the basics of how to not scale your web applications like Facebook or Netflix. If you're still unsure about the difference between NoSQL and SQL databases, this book will provide the most comprehensive explanation you'll ever need. While it isn't necessarily a book you read end to end, it's an amazing supplement if you're curious about databases and scaling your applications. It's an all-time favorite for anyone who has been working as a software engineer for at least a year. Now, let's move to the core concept of object-oriented design. I would recommend design patterns, elements of reusable object-oriented software. Regardless of whether you are learning design patterns for an object-oriented programming interview, you'll need to know the design patterns as a software engineer at large companies. This book is the origin of the world's most common design patterns today, and showing proficiency in these for your object-oriented interviews is a requirement for certain large technology companies like Amazon. Another great resource is Head First Design Patterns. 
The previous resource is dense and written in language that's hard to understand. When the original source material in design patterns is great, it doesn't help much if it's difficult to grasp. Consider head first design patterns to study simplified explanation of those common design patterns. It might not be as in-depth as the original source material, but your understanding of design patterns will be more than enough to crack any object-oriented interview. After you show off your skills to get a job, you can always continue learning more as a software engineer. Here are a few more common resources I recommend for working in a big tech. Clean code. By the end of reading clean code, you'll be able to spot the difference between good and bad code, write clean and efficient code, and understand the importance of clean names, functions, and classes. Plus, you'll pick up the tips for formatting the code by readability and mastering the error handling without losing sights of your logic. It's a must read for anyone serious about leveling up their coding skills. Then we have working efficiently with legacy code. You'll find this book a lifesaver for dealing with old code issues without breaking the bank on full rewrites. It provides practical strategies to manage existing software affordably and effectively. You learn the importance of writing tests to save code against unintended changes while optimizing code. With examples in Java, C++, and C hashtag, plus language independent advice, it's a valuable resource for developers. Then we have the mythical man moth. This book is a timeless classic. If you ever wondered why Amazon advocates for two pizza teams, uh, that team shouldn't be exceed what two pizzas can feed or where your team typically consists of no more than 10 members. It's because of the insights from this book. The Mythical Man Month introduced the concept that adding more people to a team increases communication overhead with everyone else. While this idea is the most famous essay in the book, all the other essays are equally valuable. Then we have Domain Driving Design. Domain Driving Design may feel like a textbook, but it's essential for budding software engineers. It clarifies the concept often heard in the workplace, such as breaking down objects and interactions. Understanding entity versus valuable objects can clarify the data schemas. Unlike design data intensive applications, which focuses on high level architecture, this book ties into lower level details like databases interactions and object design. Despite its complexity, it's a must read for improving engineering skills. So, what are my closing thoughts? Honestly, I didn't go through all of these resources cover to cover. If you manage to do so, you probably won't need to study for another interview again. Once you grasp your concepts in any of the upper categories, focus your time on moving to the next one. These are the resources I used, but they don't cover everyone's study plan. So with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.